Hello and welcome to National Fire Biology Unit 2, Caria 3 Reproduction. We're still on Unit 2, Multicellular Organisms, and as I said, we're on Topic 3, um, Reproduction. Once again, here's the SQA course specification or mandatory knowledge section for this topic. Remember, this is all the bits of knowledge and content that you could be tested on in a test or exam at this level. As you can see, this is a much smaller topic than previous ones, but it's still one we need to break down into smaller sections so that we can understand it properly. So as we go through the theory, there'll be some questions after each part so that you can be sure you're ready to move on. So our learning intentions today is to learn about reproduction and hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be able to state whether different types of cells are haploid or diploid, describe the types of gametes, the organs that produce them and where they're located in plant and animals, describe the basic structures of sperm and egg cells and describe fertilisation. So first of all, multicellular organisms are any organisms that are not just made of one single cell. In order to reproduce, multicellular organisms produce sex cells, but you should be referring to these as gametes. The next thing you need to know is the difference between the terms haploid and diploid, and also you have to be able to classify cells that you're given as haploid or diploid as well. So haploid and diploid refer to the number of chromosomes inside a cell's nucleus. I'll use the term chromosome complement as well quite often, and this is the number of chromosomes in a nucleus. So in human cells, our chromosome complement for most of our cells is 46. A haploid cell is a cell which contains a single set of chromosomes, like this one here on the left-hand side. So here there are three different chromosomes and there's one of each, so it's a single set of chromosomes. A diploid cell is a cell that contains two matching sets of chromosomes, like this one in the picture on the right. So you can see a diploid version of the cell that was on the left. So there are six chromosomes here. There's two matching chromosomes of each size. So this is haploid, single set of chromosomes, and this is diploid, two matching sets of chromosomes. One of the ways to remember diploid is that diploid starts with di. So di means two, so diploid cells have two matching sets of chromosomes um, inside their nucleus. The only types of cell that you need to remember are haploid are sex cells or gametes. Okay, so that would be this kind of type here. Um, and that should make sense because if you think about human sex cells or gametes, sperm and egg cells, they have to have half the number of chromosomes or a single set of chromosomes each so that when they come together, they'll create the full number of chromosomes or full chromosome complement that's found in a normal diploid cell. And we'll come back to this with another diagram soon. So just to recap, most cells, so cells like skin cells, liver cells, are diploid so they contain two matching sets of chromosomes. The exception to this rule is gametes, they are haploid and that means they contain only a single set of chromosomes. So this is just another little example. So on the right is a haploid cell with 20 chromosomes in its nucleus. So each of these is a chromosome and we can see there is 20 of them. So this would be the nucleus of a gamete. So sperm or egg cells if we're in animals and um, because there's only a single set of chromosomes. On the left is a diploid version of this cell where there are now 40 chromosomes. So you can see there's two of each type. Um, so two matching sets of chromosomes, which means this is diploid and this is haploid. So gametes can be either male or female and are found in plants and animals um, as both take part in sexual reproduction. When these male and female gametes fuse together, this process is called fertilization. So let's try some quick questions um, on what we've covered so far to check our knowledge before we move on. So can you pause the video here and try these questions either by saying the answer out loud or by writing them down and when you're ready play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay so the first question was to explain the meaning of the terms haploid and diploid. Haploid is a cell that contains a single set of chromosomes whereas diploid is a cell that contains two matching sets of chromosomes. The second question was, are gametes or sex cells haploid or diploid? Well, we know that the one exception to the rule is gametes and they are haploid. Are skin cells haploid or diploid? Well, skin cells are normal body cells, um, so they follow the usual rules, so they will be diploid. Number four, what is the name of the process where the gametes fuse? And we just said that that was fertilization. So now we're going to move on and we're gonna focus on reproduction in animals. 
So one example in reproduction animals is humans. So I'm just going to let this all be filled in and then we'll go through it bit by bit. Okay, so here we have a male and a female um, and each of their normal body cells, they have a diploid chromosome complement. This means their normal body cells have 46 chromosomes inside their nucleus, which is made up of two matching sets of chromosomes. Females produce gametes in the forms of egg cells and males produce gametes in the form of sperm cells. These gametes are haploid as they have a single set of chromosomes inside their nucleus. So in this case, we had 46 in the parent and then in the gametes, there's going to be 23. So notice that this is half of the number of chromosomes in, than inside a body cell, um, like a normal skin cell or liver cell. These sperm and egg cells then fuse together through the process of fertilization to create a cell called a zygote. Now the zygote has a diploid chromosome complement of 46 cells, just like the original body cells. And that's because it was 23 from the egg and 23 from the sperm. Other animal cells, you need to be a bit careful. So please remember there's only 46 chromosomes in diploid human cells. Please don't use this number unless the question mentions humans. Other animal cells will have a different number of chromosomes, so never say a diploid cell always has 46 chromosomes and a haploid cell always has 23, as that's only true for human cells. So what you need to know about reproduction in animals or plants are you have to know the types of gametes, the organs that produce them, and where these organs are located, and you need to be able to recognise those organs from a diagram. So first we're going to have a look at more detail at the gametes. So in animals, the male gamete is called a sperm cell. And the sperm you can see here pictured um, up on the left. And the female gamete in animals is the egg cell, which you can see down here on the right. So the basic structure of a sperm cell is in this picture here. And you should be able to draw and label this roughly. So there's the head of the sperm cell, which contains the nucleus, which will obviously be haploid as this is a gamete. So this nucleus will contain a single set of chromosomes. The sperm also has a middle piece which joins the head of the sperm to the tail and the tail helps the sperm to swim to the egg. The female gamete is the egg cell, which you can see down here, um, and the egg cell also contains a nucleus which is haploid, um, so it contains a single set of chromosomes so that when these two join together they create a diploid cell. The egg cell also contains a food store and the food store is to help provide nutrients as the cells begin to divide before the placenta and the umbilical cord are formed. So now that we know the basic structure of the male and female gametes in animals, we have to know where they are located and be able to pinpoint these in a diagram. The male gamete sperm are produced in the testes, and if you were asked to find them on a diagram, they are in the part here circled in green. You do not need to be able to label the rest of the male reproductive organs. It's enough to know where the testes are. So the testes is this part here, and that's where sperm, which is the male gamete, is produced. The female gametes' eggs are produced in the ovaries, and if you're asked to find them on a diagram, they are the two parts that are labelled in red. There are two ovaries, one on the left and one on the right. So to sum up here, the male gametes' sperm are produced inside the testes, and you should be able to draw the basic structure or label it, which is here. The female gametes are eggs, and they're produced in the ovaries, um, and again, you should be able to label this structure. So these are the ovaries on either side. So let's try some basic quick questions on what we've covered so far to check our knowledge before we move on. So once again, pause the video here and try the questions either by saying them out loud or by writing your answers down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so our first question is to name the male gamete in animals. That is the sperm. Number two, name the organ which produces this gamete is the testes. Again, remember, you should be able to label that on a diagram. Number three is to name the female gamete in animals is the egg. And number four, where, which organ um, produces this gamete is the ovaries. So now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to look at reproduction in plants. So again, you have to know the types of gametes in plants, the organs that produce them and where these organs are located, but this time on a plant diagram. So this is all the information you need to know about plants uh, reproduction on one slide. So I'm going to go through it bit by bit. So the male gamete in plants is called pollen and pollen is basically produced in the anther. Now, the first thing to remember is the difference between gametes in plants and animals. The male gamete in animals is sperm, but the male gamete in plants is pollen. 
So pollen is produced in the anther of the plant and the anther is labelled here in green. Now there are four anthers on this diagram. The anthers are the ones with the yellow bit at the top. So this is an anther, so is this, and so is this, and so is this. Now they might not be yellow on the diagram you're given on the exam paper. They're basically these bits that come up from the middle. Um, if you think of things like a lily, um, they're the bits that basically hold the sticky pollen. So they're the bits that come up out of the middle of the plant with the petals round about them. So these are anthers. The female gamete in plants are called ovules and ovules are produced in the ovaries of plants just the same as the female gamete in animals, eggs, are also produced in the ovaries. So the ovary of a plant is the part that's circled in red in the diagram. So this bit right at the bottom where the anthers join. So this is called the ovary. Don't label the ovary as being this part here. You don't need to know any of these other names. You just need to know that this is the ovary and that that is the anther. So to summarise in plants, the male gamete is pollen and pollen is produced in the anther and the female gamete is called an ovule and the ovules are produced in the ovary of the plant here. You don't need to know the structures of ovules and pollen like you had to know for sperm and egg. So let's try some quick questions about plant reproduction before we move on. So again, pause the video here, try the questions either by saying the answer out loud or writing them down and when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so question one is name the male gamete in plants. So the male gamete in plants is pollen. Name the organ which produces this gamete is the anther. Name the female gamete in plants is the ovule. And name the organ which produces the gamete is the ovary. So the ovary is the same um, as the organ where the female gamete is produced in both animals and in plants. Everything else is different. So here's a helpful summary of the male and female gametes in plants and animals to help you remember the differences. One thing to remember as well is that all four of these are gametes and so are haploid. So all of them have a single set of chromosomes. So the final thing we need to know about reproduction is the definition of fertilisation. So whether we're looking at plants or animals, the definition of fertilisation is the same. Fertilisation is the process where the nuclei of two haploid gametes fuse to produce a diploid zygote. So let's break this down into a few more parts. So first of all, the word nuclei. So nuclei is just the plural of nucleus. So instead of saying nucleuses, we say nuclei. So fertilization is where the nucleus from the male gamete fuses with the nucleus from the female gamete. And both of these nuclei are haploid. So as we discussed earlier, because the gametes are the only cells which are haploid, so, so contain a single set of chromosomes. When the male gamete and the female gamete nuclei fuse together, they create a diploid zygote. So a zygote is the first cell that's formed after fertilisation, and because the two haploid gametes or nuclei fuse to create a zygote, that means that this zygote is going to be diploid because it's got one set of gametes or um, sorry, chromosomes from the male gamete, and it's got one set of chromosomes from the female gamete. So it will contain two matching sets of chromosomes. The final thing you have to know about fertilisation is that the diploid zygote will then start to divide and it will divide to form an embryo. So the zygote is the first cell which is formed in fertilisation and then the embryo after. A final reminder that gametes, so the sperm and egg and animal or the ovule and pollen and plants are all haploid cells, whereas the zygote and the embryo are both diploid. So let's try some final quick questions um, on what we've covered so far just to check our knowledge before we finish up. So again, pause the video here and try these questions either by saying them out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so for question one, it says explain what happens during fertilization. So the nuclei of two haploid gametes fuse to create a diploid zygote. You want to mention haploid and diploid here, and you should be using the word zygote for the final cell. What name is given to the first cell produced after fertilization has taken place? That is a zygote. Name the ball of cells which this fertilized egg divides into, and will zygote, remember, then becomes an embryo. Number four has two parts to it. So if an animal cell has a diploid number of 32, how many chromosomes would be present in a kidney cell and then a sperm cell? Now remember, if the diploid number is 32, we know that kidney cells are a normal cell in the body, so they will also be diploid, which means that they will have 32. 
Sperm cells are different. Remember, sperm cells are haploid, so they're going to have half the number of a diploid cell. So that means the kidney cell is 32 and the sperm cell would only be 16. The final question, if a plant cell has a haploid number of 17, how many chromosomes would be present in each root cell and each pollen cell? Now, this one's a bit of a trick one. So they've given you the haploid number to start with, not the diploid number. So a haploid cell would contain 17. A diploid cell would contain double this. So a root cell is not a pollen or ovule. So it's not a gamete. So this will be a normal cell in a plant. So a normal cell in a plant is not haploid, it's diploid. So we would have to double this number. And if we double it, we get 34. So there'd be 34 chromosomes, which is the diploid number present in a root cell. Pollen cells, on the other hand, we know pollen and ovular are two gametes and gametes are haploid. So that means that the pollen cell would have 17 because that is the same number as the haploid number that's been given here. So be careful when you're reading these questions. Make sure you know which number they give you. Are they giving you the haploid or diploid number? And then from there, work out is it a normal cell or is it a gamete that they're talking about? So that's us finished learning about reproduction. I hope you can now state whether different type cell types are haploid or diploid. I hope you can describe the types of gamete, the organs that produce them and where they're located in plants and animals. You should also be able to describe the basic structures now of sperm and egg cells. And finally, you should be able to describe and give the definition for fertilization. Please feel free to go back and watch parts of this video again in the future if you need a little refresher on the topic. Um, thank you once again for listening.